now turn back to the uh, destruction of the rainforests and look at the recording that's just been made of a special KYTV Rock for Trees record in aid of the Brazilian rainforests. I'm here because I think it's important that we all do something to protect the environment. They'll keep the engine running, John, only be a couple of hours, all right. <laughs> Yeah, the worst thing is the waste. I mean, the waste is enormous. Get me one with a smaller waste and bigger tits, all right? It's important that we send these Indians the essential things in life, um, like brandy, um, handmade boots, that's very important, yeah. uh, room service, good to do that room service. Drugs. No, 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 don't be stupid, man, we shouldn't be sending them drugs. No, no not drugs. Not drugs, no, no. no. <laughs> they grow the bloody stuff there, for Christ's sake. <laughs> this could be the end of civilization as we know. I'm in your hands. Right. I'll sing anything you like. Uh, okay, there you go. Yeah. Parrots. Yeah. Well, one word, parrots. Yeah, yeah. Well, who's singing the rest of the line? Well, we've got these Indians in the rainforest, they'll be doing that. Well, how come these Indians have got two words? I've only got one. Parrots. Well, they, they live in the rainforest. Yeah, yeah, they so live in the rain. Yeah, they live in the rainforest, exactly. So who's ever <laughs> heard of them? <laughs> So at the end of the day, you know, uh, this is what it's all about. Scotch, <laughs> anyone? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just delighted we've done something to stop our trees being destroyed. Yeah. <laughs> oh, bloody hell. The Green Green Show, yeah. And remember, it's a very worthy cause. Every copy you buy of this record goes some little way towards knocking new kids on the block off the number one spot. So. <laughs> Excuse me, sir, I was wondering if I could ask your opinion on environmental issues. No, oh, I'd round them all up and put them in a cage, quite frankly. <laughs> environmental issues. Oh, I'm sorry, I misheard. I thought you said football hooligans. <laughs> no, no, environmental issues. Yes, well, very important in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And what would be top of your list of priorities? Uh, withdrawal of passport, national service for all offenders, and enforced castration. It may seem harsh, but it's the only language... Are you still talking about football hooligans? Yes. No, it's really environmental issues that I was wanting your opinion on. Oh, well, um, drinking water, I think, is important. Ah, oh, you think the standard of it is particularly low in this country, do you? Low? I'd shoot them all through the temples. <laughs> <laughs> David, you were just about to tell us your fascinating theory about the environment. Uh, that's right, Anna, and there's a steward's inquiry at Newmarket, evidently. <laughs> uh, well, it's what I call my take, make and throw away theory, Anna, uh, by which I mean if I take a clump of earth and then make something out of the resources in it and then throw the rest away, uh, and then if I keep on doing that, what will happen eventually? 
You have a small pile of earth by your right foot. <laughs> There's more to it than that. All right, you have a big pile of earth. It's the same principle. But you're not taking my point. We in the Green Party believe we have to start recycling resources. Well, uh, maybe we can take some uh, questions on that topic from our studio audience. Yes, yes, you, madam, yeah. What would the Green Party do about rubbish? Well, we would uh, seek to recycle as much of it as possible. Recycle? Is that not a reasonable solution? I don't want it recycled. I want them to take it away without leaving a trail up my drive. <laughs> this was a domestic problem, was it? It still is. Yes, well, I, I'm not sure the Green Party can pledge to have dustmen collect your rubbish any more tidily. But... Why not? Well, it's just a local issue. I mean, we can't get involved in that. Have you ever fought in a war? <laughs> no. Well, how do you know what you're talking about, then? Yeah, yes, uh, th thank you very much. Uh, David? Yes? Tottenham now two up, apparently. <laughs> Welcome back to our green mass debate. <laughs> well, of course, many of the rural parts of southeast England are under threat of devastation from the roots of the Channel Tunnel, or Channel, as it's uh, known. Currently proposed by British Rail, or Braille, and sanctioned <laughs> by the uh, current government, or current government. <laughs> Sir Anthony, you for once are not in agreement with the government's plans. Well, as chairman of the Sussex and Kent No Channel Tunnel anywhere near my country mansion, thank you very much, <laughs> um, I have to say that I'm not necessarily opposed to the uh, rail link itself, but to the routes proposed by the government, and I have therefore uh, suggested an alternative route, which I think has two major advantages. Uh, as you can see, it involves rerouting the Channel Tunnel slightly so that it emerges not in Dover, but in Glasgow. <laughs> Uh, then the rail link would work its way down through Liverpool, the black country, through the middle of Birmingham, and then into London via the east end to Fenchurch Street. <laughs> and what is the first major advantage? Well, as you can see, uh, it manages to completely avoid all areas of naturally beautiful middle-class country homes, <laughs> and instead ploughs through deprived, uh, poverty-stricken inner-city areas uh, where lots of poor people live. And what is the second advantage? Well, it doesn't involve any change in government policy. If you have a small child and live near a motorway, don't let him sit out on it. Putting <laughs> small children in the fast lane of a motorway is dangerous. Don't do it. That was a blindingly obvious public information film. Water, water, is it what it ought to? <laughs> Sir Anthony, how do you stand on water? I have no idea. I'm not Jesus. You know? <laughs> uh, however, um, <clears throat> surveys have shown time and time again that people want raw sewage pumped straight into the sea at all our major holiday resorts. Oh. <laughs> well, we I'm are... sorry, Minister. I find that very hard to believe. We ask people a simple question. Do you want raw sewage pumped straight into the sea? Or would you prefer to have a controlled nuclear experiment take place in your kitchen? And the vast majority plumped for the frothy green sandcastles option. Yes, very convincing, Minister. Yes, very convincing, Minister. I'm sorry, I really can't believe that. David? Lineker's just been sent off. I think we've all got to take personal responsibility for our water. Take this water, for example. Yes, that's my water, thank you. Well, it isn't any specific individual's water. Now, this is my if... bloody water. I was drinking it. <laughs> all right, I'm only using it to illustrate a point. Now, if we were to take this water and pour a little bit... Yes, you get a thump in the face. <laughs> All right, I'll use my glass. Good. Bloody communist. Now, if I were to take the water in this glass and throw it over Sir Anthony... You see? Oh, oh I see. Yes, that's my water. Yeah. <laughs> it's yo by men, yo, human tent. So chill out, homeboys. Hang on the fence. Say bye, take now, cos you know makes sense. Well, not to me, it doesn't. <laughs> Hi. This is the sea. Pretty bloody obvious, I would have thought, but the producer did insist that I make it quite clear. Environmentalists claim that because of an outlet pipe that leads directly into the sea, this beach has an unacceptably high level of pollution. Well, let me tell you that I've been swimming about for the past few minutes, and there is no evidence whatsoever of any domestic sewage. <laughs> Well, Mike, I'm shocked by the terrible state that these birds get into through oil pollution. 
Look at this poor creature here. <laughs> it's a piece of seaweed, isn't it?